what are the skill sets uh, skill sets required for a career in events or for a career for that matter in any field that you go into the first first thing is you are a passion preneur i'm asking you these days everybody wants to be an entrepreneur but i'm saying are you a passion preneur passion shows should show on your face on your on the way you speak an eye contact with the person and half your work is done one can tell how passionate you are about your knowledge domain of the subject and how passionate passionate you are about what you do in your communication skills so to to be and i will go through all these points basically these are generic skill sets that you require and the rest then we will break it down the communication skills we will break it down in the next 5 minutes community uh, conceptualization ideation you need to be creative and innovative in today's times it is important this is the most important and required from anybody planning and logistics you need to be strong in your detailing listing checklists planning the whole process in a particular manner with the logistics and noting everything down strategizing time to time times keep changing you need to keep changing your strategies today it may be different 6 months down the line it may be different okay it does it uh, strategizing can be done once you do a swot analysis of your activities every and your year or maybe every 6 month you figure out what are your strengths weaks weaknesses opportunities threats and then work to new strategies okay this were our strengths but they did not work these were our weaknesses so let's overcome them how do we overcome them this puts together this entire activity and analysis is called strategy coordination very important because it's team work and if you leave anybody out and you try to do it yourself never works god lies in detailing it's a saying and i thoroughly believe in it my eye for detail has always gained me great achievements has always given me more growth and made me a better planner and an organizer year on year all over all these years very meticulous in my work in the sense um you follow formats systems practices and meticulously note everything and then you know impart the same thing or let your team follow you you are a go getter you are diligent in your work stress and risk management our business is completely stress driven risk management driven risk driven so how do you manage what are your backup plans what are your backup resources how are you going to you know change something overnight or in an hours time makes you a good stress manager and a risk management person interactive and interpersonal skills which we will do further when we go down in the next slide we are in networking how good are you with your people with whether it's vendors whether it's the artists whether it's the corporate heads how good are you at how how do you maintain contact with everybody how do you keep a good relationship with everybody learning and initiative drive and determination if you do not have the drive to learn and you think you know it all you will never succeed you have to be learning at the end of 38 9 years almost today i still learn from my young teammates i still learn i do teach a lot but i learn also every day every, there's not every day there's something new to learn either there is a new technology that has come out or either there is some new format there are new digital ways that you can work your things out more easier less time consuming etc so learning initiative has to be one of the biggest assets you must have as an individual leadership and teamwork we've done it before we lead from the front we keep the team together time and machine management you don't work individually or you don't work isolated you when you work in an organization you work uh, 10 hours 12 hours a day in that you're doing three and four projects you're not doing just one project 
So how do you divide your time? How do you prioritize your time? And how do you manage it to give each project that particular time and uh, progress? Marketing, selling, negotiation skills, of course, the gift of the gab, uh, you know, the right, you know, your product so well, you live with it so that you can sell it at best and negotiate, of course, at best. Finance and administration regulations, uh, somebody who's good at office planning and office management and finance management, that's one of the team members that you need to have. Making good presentations and thinking out of the box, which this point should have been the first one. Today, like I mentioned earlier also, making good presentations, making prop, I wouldn't, even if it's not good or great, even making presentations, just making them is is a need of the hour. And you think out of the box. There are, you know, it is amazing to know that just your PowerPoint itself has such different variations that you can work on. It is amazing. There was um, a webinar. I would, I would, I would recommend that you all go and look at it. And there are, it's, it's on the EMA site. And there is a lady, Suchar. Uh, I don't know her full name. I will pass it on to Igno. But you all must hear her. She is awesome on how to explore making good presentations simply by PowerPoint. You don't need to have Adobe. You don't need to have the works. Just by PowerPoint, you can do a fantastic job. Now we come to communication skills. Okay? Good communication skills will always take you a long way. Very, very true, 100%. Now, how do you do that? How? Communication is a two-way process. You're listening to somebody first and always listen first. Then put in your thoughts. First, listen. Take down points and a brief given. Many organizations send you a brief on a mail, but some of them don't. Where you go for a briefing, then you need to be with your proper pad, pen. And I feel, I feel very, very sad when I see youngsters today who come for a meeting without a pad and a pen. That shows your first, you're not a passionate person on your work. The first thing. So the first thing when you go for a meeting, always have your pad and paper or a proper decent pad. It should be a small book and a pen to make notes of whatever the person is saying. It'll always be, that'll help you to go back home when you're thinking on your thinking, when you put your thinking hat, or hat on and when you're conceptualizing the event or you know, brainstorming, all these points will give you references to fall back on. Then you decode your brief. You go point-wise, address, uh, address point-wise, brainstorm with your team, share, and then again, you note down the minutes of the meeting, even of the team, who said what. You never know what some brain may come out with. So I never laugh at anybody, even if it is a if it is a silly point that somebody is given. You never know when that silly point could be better and put on the event. So share the minutes of the meeting with your client because that is what is important and it's on record that you had given us this brief and this is how we are coming back to you on this brief. Should there be any changes, you will intimate us immediately. No verbal commitments or communication ever. Every query you revert to or you want to communicate must be on paper via mail. Communication gives an affirmed commitment to a client and vice versa. When you send the communication back with the minutes of the meeting, the client feels, oh, they have absorbed what we said. They are on the right track. We are good to go. Internal and external communication, both are important. External is obviously with your, when you're booking a vendor or when you're booking an artist, you're giving them the correct details, you're giving them the correct information. Artists, when being booked today, want a whole lot of details in terms of who is the event for, what is the profile. And that is important for them to know because they need to prepare themselves, they need to prepare their uh, programming according to what the client is and what the client wants, whether they want happy songs, whether they want old songs, whether they want new music, whatever. What, what is the objective of the whole event is important to communicate to them. Again, put down on paper, important. Communicate with a vendor. I want 20 chairs, 40 tables, 
three uh, fans, etc. Important because otherwise, how will the guy indent for you? How will you make? So f- you, when you make your element list, this is how you detail it down to the T, putting in every detail with the numbers, with the sizes, so that you're very clear in what you want, and therefore that will enable the vendor to revert to you with the right pricing and the right quote. Sometimes words cannot express. Okay, when you are most of the times, in fact, words, you know, words are best expressed yet, but not completely. Therefore, sometimes putting it down on paper helps. It memorizes better. I, I, I have a habit because if I jot something down, I will never forget it. But there are chances that I go for three briefings in a day, and I may, you know, mix up with one or the other. I'm human. Right. But if I have jotted it down, I will remember and I can always go back and check. No, this was on this brief. This is it. So it helps you memorize better. It leaves an impression. Most important, something to fall back on when you go back. Now, examples. So your communication with the venue, vendors and artists, legal departments. Again, so important. What is it that you want your legal department to protect you from? safeguard you from. Therefore, they need all the details. A simple example, when you seek permission from the permissions department, they need to know what is the size of your venue, what are the number of people expected, who are the kind of people, what is the event about, how long is it, what is the date, where is the venue, how are people coming in, etc. There are various requirements each different permission requires. So you need to meet with those requirements I mean, with those details to be provided and given to every vendor or artist or even the venue. When you're booking the venue, the time, duration, it's important. So every communication with detailing for every aspect that you are going to ask for or seek permission for or seek a booking from needs to be put down. Clear every point. Be specific. Okay. You can't say, I want a gen set. A gen set of how many kilowatts, how many shifts, etc. is required. So that's I, when I call it, you break it down and go into detail. If I need chairs, I'll say I need chairs. What chairs? You need plastic chairs. You need Dunlop chairs. You want them covered. You want them dressed with a bow tie, etc. That kind of detail. Ask for clarity if not clear. Always mention down. We've been very specific. However, should you need anything, kindly revert and let us know. You don't get response when you write in again, then have, but yet you have it on record. Sometimes clients, no matter how much you tell them, please can you send us a mail, they will not. They may have their own ways of working, not the right ones, of course, or they may be very lethargic, or they may just want to escape that exercise. You put it down. We've met today at so-and-so time. That's the minutes of the meeting. So that's confirming that you were there for that meeting and this is what we discussed and this is how we are going to take it ahead with you. Internal with now, internal communication, that was all external. Come to internal external uh, communication with your, your HR team. You know, when you, it is, you know, when you get your letter or when you're writing back your feedback on something or you, the one is with the HR, all right? The other is with your teammates. You came from a briefing. You want to give them the same briefing and then sit and discuss each point. The next is interdepartment. The admin department may want to convey to the whole office. Offices will be closed on so-and-so, so-and-so days, or our timings are changing, or we would lie, we see that there are people coming in late and we want them to come on time, et cetera, et cetera. With your internal teammates, you may want to tell them we're meeting so-and-so person at so-and-so time. This was the brief that we've got. Now we are going back. Let's sit and brainstorm, and you prepare your points for the brainstorm meeting. That's your internal communication. Ensure you reserve, receive acknowledgement of communication. It's important, kindly acknowledge receipt of this mail so that sometimes, you know, mails go into spam, they go in the other trash box sometimes, or they go, they just sit in your outbox. So it is important to check. And these days, WhatsApp is the best. I sent you a mail. Have you received it? Kindly acknowledge. 
again, you have that on record. There are many times when clients go back on words because maybe they have too many, um, you know, things to do. So they keep forgetting and therefore they do not revert to you or they come simply say, we never saw your mail. We never got your mail. Now you have that on record and you can say mail sent to you, re-forwarding it to you. So you are safe in your communication and you are safe in your process of work. Manage folders for each project. Very important. Uh, you know, every, every project that I do, I have a format of a sheet. It's an Excel sheet that's, that notes all the details of uh, um, the event in terms of the venue, the profile of the people, where is the event, how many people were there, who are we networking with? Networking, when I say, I mean, who are my partners to the event? And then what was the revenue that I generated from that event? And what were the profits that I earned from the event? Now, this becomes my folder sheet in a file, which I keep through through the years to come. Because, or I, and on an annual basis, maybe after five years down the line, you can change and start afresh. But... This is one, keeping record of the work done, of the projects done per month. Two, it gives you a fallback on, you know, you get suddenly you get another event very much on the same lines. It's a good reference to go back. Oh, this was the venue. We had this event at this point of time. This is exactly what this client wants. I think we can, you know, take these measures. We can take these um, fallback reference points for this event. So, and also it becomes a record keeping habit. You turn back for the whole month, you can go back and see, okay, I did 10 projects. Each one was X revenue. This is what I did for the month. And this is what I reserved from the month. This is the revenue I got in. This is the profits I got. In. And every project has a file. When you write down everything on paper, keep in, in that folder throughout. Folder, when I say a plastic folder, Keep retaining it through till the end of the event. End of the event, the important documents, your Excel sheets, your brief sheets, etc. Stay put. File them up in a folder, in a in a what you call that uh, file folder. But the, and the others you can throw away. Okay? But till the end of the project, everything that you even scribbled on your paper, retain it. File all handwritten notes also, just in case you need it ever. A good reference folder for reinventing and saving time, etc. I just mentioned that point. You can go back after six months if you've got a similar event, you go back to that, check it all out, give it a glance, and you can, you know, get refresh your memory and everything comes back to you. Next, we come to being. The other way of communication, and that is verbal communication. How do you communicate verbally is, again, another very, very important aspect of your personality grooming. Okay, uh, We do groom our teammates where required as to how to, when you're talking, when you first, when you go to meet somebody, the handshake is the most important. Ladies reach out to a man. A man never reaches out to a lady for a handshake. A lady reaches out to a hand for a handshake to a man. And that handshake should be nice and proper and firm. Not like this. It should be like this. Proper. No? So your handshake. When you sit down, how do you sit? What are your first words you say? How do you introduce yourself? How clear are you? What are your facial expressions, your smile on your face, your body language? People have different, different habits of, uh, you know, sometimes either they use the uh, 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 too much or they use their hands too much or they, or they keep shifting body to body, side to side. All these things matter. When you sit, how do you maintain poise? Who are you facing? How are you sitting? Ladies have a manner in which they sit, mainly most of the times ladies do not sit cross-legged, sit with their legs. I cannot demonstrate that, but you know, it depends on how you sit straight, 
body language, your uh, facial expressions, and how you use your hands all matter. Make that eye contact with the right people. Now, there may be 10 people sitting in the meeting. You'll soon figure out as to who is the one who's leading the meeting and the one or two influencers in the meeting. So start maintaining your eye contact. And if there are 10 people sitting across you, then make it a point that you look at the center at times, you look at the side at times, and you look at this side at times. So that you are, everybody feels you're talking to everybody. All of them are inclusive in the meeting. And of course, then your eye contact specifically with the one or two influencers and the person leading the meeting. Make that eye contact with the right people. We discussed that. Grab the attention of your listeners. Wake them up, need we. Now, very often, and this is the winning point, guys, of how you, uh, in the first three to five minutes, how you grab the attention of your listeners. Some may come, and it happens most often. Some are just come for the meeting because bosses said, come on, sit down for the meeting. So they're there. Then with their, they're with their phone or they're fidgeting with their pen or they're busy, you know, sending some message on the phone or they're busy with other thoughts. Now it is up to you how you grab their attention. All right. So sometimes in a class, mainly when I have afternoon sessions, I find that my students are all had a nice heavy meal and then they're all kind of going to doze off. So I do a bang on exercise. Shut up. Get up, everybody. Shake your hands. Dance a bit. Shout, scream, say a big hello. Various things. Now, you can't do that for meetings, of course, for corporate meetings or whatever. But the way, the language and the first statement, your opening statement, and the way you, you know, how you maintain your voice level and how you convey that first statement is the winner. That's called waking them up need me. All right. So, so if you find any kind of you know, disruption or uh, um, non attend, attend, you know, not attending it properly, you need to grab their attention by waking them up and give a nice strong statement or make some funny comment or, or, or start with a nice opening line. Start with a bang. The first five minutes are crucial to draw to the listeners, to draw the listeners. Use simple lay language, yeah? Many people sitting in the, in the meetings, sometimes there are people who do not understand English well. Or sometimes there are people who may not understand you speaking fast. So you need to maintain that pace as well as see how people are interacting and then make it English need be, do a little bit of Hindi, explain it again and, you know, keep the, the attention drawn towards you. The first five minutes are crucial. So use simple layman language. Smile, not with a grim, bored look. Always have this little smirky smile on your face. Small little, not even laughing, giggling all the time, but a smile on your face plays a big role. Pause when you're talking. Give examples. Ask questions. Have you understood? Am I, am I clear? I mean, uh, should I repeat what I, what I said? If you find somebody glaring into the, gazing away to you and saying, okay, many a times people say, sorry, can you repeat? We didn't understand. Sure. And repeat the whole thing. Okay? But pause with it. Don't start with left, right, ta -ta 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 and go on talking. Pause with your sentences. Hold on. Look at them. See if it, they've understood. If you have the slightest doubt, try and repeat and say it again. And ask questions all the time. I hope I'm clear and very, very positive. Not like, did you understand? You know, your, again, there your tone, etc. has to be the correct one. Make it interactive and interesting. That is, again, how to hold attention. It adds one more point. If you make it interactive. Yes, uh, so uh, Mr. Jen, Mr. So-and-so, uh, I believe, you know, it's now, so when, before you go for a meeting, you always... Many a times people tell you that so-and-so, so-and-so people are going to meet you. 
or you can always ask in your mail hey when confirming we will be so many people may i know who out will be there from your side and so that you know who you're meeting and you have the names ready or when you're introduced you keep them in your mind and you you know address the person with the name and say excuse me sir i i just wanted to ask you a question you you handle the marketing here so how does this help i mean how does this help your how do you market your product uh, what do you, what is it that you want specific questions to specific people okay that's how you make it interactive and interesting then the guy too feels okay you know we are not sitting here just she's talking to the boss and we are sitting here we are also included in the meeting it is interesting and we can give our view points don't eat words be clear and specific sometimes when you talk fast you tend to eat your words so don't eat words don't miss words be clear and specific to the point again don't do storytelling lamba lamba just to the point be brief precise to the point don't beat around the bush be affirmative now for that you need to have your product knowledge intact you need to be prepared when you go for a meeting with complete knowledge of the organization you are going to meet their product their strategies so for that you've got to do a lot and lot of reading and awareness before you go so that should they shoot any question to you you are answerable immediately and you're affirmative you're not say i think or i may or i have to check those don't give affirmative results to the client they don't make them feel positive that you are you know you know your job well but when you are affirmative and you say yes sir this is how it is and you answer every question back to them they feel that they are in safe hands and they have done correct by selecting you so being affirmative being knowledgeable about your own product what you are offering and the and the subject that you're going to you're going to uh, the meet the client you're going to meet have your content ready in front of you so it makes sense to have bullet points on a, on your uh, meeting pad so that you discuss point wise and you tick off every point once you discuss it so that nothing remains it is not good to go back to a client again and again and again asking hey you know we 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 forgot to ask you this or whatever so sit before the meeting with your team make all your points up decide who will ask what to whom and get all your information that you want slightest doubts that you want in the initial meeting as much as you can once you go back to your working table and you feel that okay there are some points that we missed out and given you know the information was not given correctly or accurately you can always put back a mail and say that we have progressed so and so on this but we have a few doubts if you can please help us with these few clarifications again on communication so that what comes to you is proper and the right communication so if you have your content ready in front of you you have all the points to shoot out and less time wasted divide your content in such sections break it up in a flow now suddenly you can't go ad hoc so once you get the brief from the client and you're making your notes make your notes also in that particular flow right in those three sections wherever when it is about the product is the first section if it's the venue time place and all that's the second section third section you do the strategies that you want to apply the objectives that the client wants etc break your content into sections don't go ad hoc suddenly you are asking something suddenly when the client is talking about the the objective you are asking them about the uh, you know when you or something irrelevant so if if you follow a proper and this holds good on both sides not necessarily when you're going for a meeting you could be the client and you could be calling an event company for the meeting but you also need to be precise with your in the same manner 
So communication is a two-way thing here. And I'm here, whatever I'm discussing and saying is that it holds a two-way process. And it's meant for clients to companies and event companies to clients, whichever company it may be. Not necessary event, it could be um, in your marketing field, in, in, in the SMCG field, it could be in the IT field, anywhere. This holds good. This communication and its skill sets hold good for any meet, any and all communication. So divide your content, break it up in a flow. It makes more sense. Again, time saving. You're not beating around the bush. You're not saying, okay, mm, wasting time. Be precise, to the point, be sure of your knowledge content and convey correct info correctly. Do not fumble, do not give wrong figures, numbers, do not fake. In short, don't blur, don't, don't over exaggerate. Learn your numbers, learn your figures. Uh, it's okay to be a little uh, underplayed rather than overplayed. I hope you guys enjoyed. I think I'm time up. I hope you all enjoyed the lecture. See you soon in my next. Tanas Basrur signing off. Thank you. <laughs>